wish you would have met my grandmother. She would have loved you. Josephine Brent was born in 1936 in a small town in Virginia. She was a mother, she was a nurse, she was a wife, and she raised three daughters. So nothing hurt me more than watching her battle breast cancer and watching her life experience change in so many ways. And I was completely devastated when I lost her to breast cancer in 2009. That day, and losing her, from then my, my life will never be the same. While experiencing breast cancer, my grandmother shopped in medical supply stores much like this one for post mastectomy bras and prosthetics. She shopped behind aisles of walkers and bedpans and adult diapers and laxatives for her necessary purchases. She never found anything that fit her body or fit her lifestyle or was even in the same realm of her skin tone. And unfortunately, this is the reality for so many women who are living with breast cancer. They're shopping and many people don't even know that th their purchases are covered by their health insurance plans. These items are incredibly expensive and they drive many women into debt and poverty. And this is a reality for the 4 million women who are living with a history of breast cancer and the 270,000 who will be diagnosed every year. Their chest walls are imperfect, but they deserve an optimized shopping experience. And when I learned that after 30 years, the durable medical equipment industry had never changed, I knew I needed to do something about it. So this is why I created Cherry Blossom Intimates, a boutique designed with women in mind. Our mission in life is to help women who've experienced breast cancer to shop with dignity for all of these necessary purchases. I've dedicated the past five years of my life completely to innovating the space of breast cancer. When women walk into our boutique, they're not passing <laughs> these bedpans and these walkers anymore. They're actually walking past beautiful lace negligees and lingerie that hangs on golden racks. They're welcomed into warm fitting rooms with oversized chairs, and their lives are, are enhanced. They're given their dignity back during their shopping experience. On top of all this, we handle all medical billing in-house for our patients to ensure that they never feel like they're walking this road alone. Our business has done quite well and we've been thriving. We actually win many pitch competitions and we've closed our $2.5 million seed round of venture capital to soon expand our, our work across the country. Thank you. But it has not always been easy for us. I remember going to my first durable medical equipment conference and being so excited to be there. I walked into the room and I quickly realized that I was the only black woman there as an attendee. I was clearly the youngest person there and I was the only one dressed in pink. <laughs> um, and what made it really challenging was um, I walked to the front one day and um, a really nice attendee came up to me and asked me for her order because she thought that I was a waitress. But this is the reality for so many and I understand why the durable medical equipment industry has not changed. But from that moment, I knew I had to do something about it and I had to innovate in this space. So I put my hot pink mind, <laughs> my millennial lens, and I wanted to bring them both together to innovate in the space of breast cancer. So now we use 3D printing to actually create custom breast prosthetics that women can wear that will be affixed to their chest that look like the breasts that they've lost prior to breast cancer. We've also expanded our line to include multiple skin tones so that all women feel included. And beyond that, we accept their health insurance programs across almost every single health insurance carrier that you can imagine here in the United States. Thank you. During the COVID pandemic though, I had to decide what we would do again to innovate. What do we do if our doors are closed and we can no longer see and feel and touch a breast cancer survivor in person? So I created Maya, which connects women across the country to certified mastectomy fitters so that they can be fit for bras and prosthetics from the comfort of home. We often refer to ourselves as the Warby Parker of boobs <laughs> because our business model is so closely to the same. 
And this, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> this has actually been such an exciting moment for our customers, but what this did was it made me realize so much of why it requires us across the country to use our differences to actually build things and to be innovative and to create, and that we're not creative because of, but also despite, and sometimes bringing multiple perspectives will help us to bridge the gaps across the country. Unfortunately, though, this isn't the reality for all female founders. Uh, according to PitchBook, only 2% in 2021, only 2% of female founders received, or female founders received only 2% of funding across the country, across the board, even though women founders are known to be 63% more successful than all male startup teams. You have to begin to ask yourself why. And if we were to begin to put our own perspectives, the view of women, the view of women of color, the view of people of color into innovation, what can we then create? And all this is even more important to me because just six weeks ago, I had a baby. <laughs> and I often think about the world and what it will be like for her. And when she walks into the room, will people wonder who she is? Will she be an anomaly? Will her life matter? Um, and as we continue to innovate in this space, I hope that we can all put our minds together so that we can create a world that is better for not just my children, but a world that is better for your children and a world that is different from the lives of our grandparents. Thank you.